So as you all know by now, Republicans are currently in hot water after attempting to quietly gut the Office of Congressional Ethics, and they are now in full damage control mode. Now, how they do damage control varies depending on the loathsome Republican you see. So for example, this Republican tried to run away from the issue when he was confronted about it. Did you vote for that? That was a voice vote. It was not a recorded vote. Quite frankly, I sat there and observed. So did you abstain from this vote or did you take a position? What was your well, position? It was clear that it was going to pass. So there was a lot of discussion about it. And so it passed. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. Did you support it? You know, good morning. You know, I've not been a victim of the OCE. So there was a lot of discussion about the lack of due process, the lack of transparency. That was great. You can tell that he was uncomfortable because he was being confronted and he couldn't walk faster without appearing to be awkward. If he could, he would run. So that was fantastic. Now, there's another way that the loathsome Republicans are trying to do damage control and the propaganda wing of the Republican Party, which is Fox News, they didn't necessarily choose to run away from the issue like the coward you just saw did, but instead they tried to uh, deceive the American public and obfuscate the truth. The other side of the story is that this oversight ethics board really didn't amount to very much at all in the first place. All it, all, the only official power it really had, Tucker, and it had no subpoena power, so the, its investigations, to the extent they were investigations, were highly limited, was to make recommendations to the House Ethics Committee, which remains in place. Uh, yeah. It did, however, have the ability to receive anonymous tips, investigate them in whatever way it could, and then publish them. So that what you had was sort of half-finished, half-baked investigative right. material being released uh, of material that might or might not even be uh, uh, the subject of a recommendation to the House Ethics Committee. And it, this, was a, this was an operation, I think, that it's fair to say was in bad need of reform because the potential for incomplete investigations was very real and the potential for abuse in the release of these materials right. was very real as well. So, and gutting is a sort of a useless word to apply to an outfit that really never had any official power to begin with. Now that was really insightful because he said the other side of the story is that the Oversight Ethics Board really didn't amount to much in the first place. Oh yeah? If the OCE really is useless, then why would you gut it? Wouldn't you instead try to reform it and make it more effective? We all know what's really going on here. They want corruption, the legalized corruption that we already have, where you can take unlimited sums of money from your super bag. That's not enough. They actually want to do illegal corruption and get away with that as well. Not happening. He said their only real power is to make recommendations to the House Ethics Committee. And that's true. But when they conduct these investigations, they were allowed to publish the results of their findings to the public. And they did not like that because they don't like to be shamed when they commit brazen acts of corruption. So that's specifically the problem that they had with this. And of course, they don't want to reform it because the people who vocally supported this move were being investigated by the OCE. So, for example, Congressman Blake Farenthold supported this, and he's currently being investigated by it for sexually harassing a staffer. So so of course he'd want to do away with it. And there was also Peter Roskam, who was under investigation by the OCE for accepting a bribe in the form of a trip to Taiwan. But for some reason, he suddenly doesn't want to talk about his support for the measure after previously publicly supporting it. It's funny what public shaming will do. Now also, I love how Jason Chaffetz is someone who voted for this as well. This guy lambasted Hillary Clinton for months, and rightfully so, because of her corruption while she was Secretary of State. And now, he's not so concerned about corruption. He wants to gut this corruption watchdog because he wants to be corrupt himself. Just the hypocrisy is just... It's too much for me. It's overwhelming. <laughs> now, finally, we come to the third and final response. Uh, and this is from Steve King. He chose to just outright admit you know what, I'd do away with it totally. You support sort of taking it, taking the office and moving it under the very lawmakers it Simply, is supposed to I would repeal it. it completely if I had the choice. You would get rid of the ethics office altogether. Why? Uh, because I haven't seen any good things come from them, and I've seen many, many bad things come from them. If you're an entity that's set up and your purpose is to accept complaints, which will be anonymous if you accept anonymous complaints at all, and then you do the investigation, you come up with these charges, they don't have any subpoena power, they don't have any enforcement power, they have to refer to the 
Ethics Committee. That's fine if that's all they did. But they're leaking information and misinformation to the press, and they're, they've found power in doing that. And that has cost members of Congress in total millions of dollars. It's damaged political careers unjustly and probably ended some political careers early. So I'm glad to know where you stand there, Steve. And if you notice there, he contradicted himself because on one hand, he says that the OCE lacks teeth, but on another hand, he said that it unjustly destroyed political careers too early. Well, which is it? If it doesn't have teeth, then how does it destroy political careers? Well, it's because he claims they, quote, leak information and misinformation to the press. No, they simply make the conclusions of their investigations public. That's called transparency, Steve, something you wouldn't know about. So in other words, he doesn't like when the public finds out about corruption, and he's proposing to let the House Ethics Committee be the ones in charge of corruption, because I'm sure they'll be completely impartial when they investigate themselves and their peers for corruption. That sounds like a great check on corruption, Steve. Look, the fact of the matter is that we already have lax campaign finance laws that allows these types of donations to go on that they're just tantamount to bribery. They really are. They're legalized bribes and it's a form of corruption. But that's not enough for Steve. Now, presumably, I should be giving Steve credit here because at least he's being bold and just telling the truth, right? Well, actually, it's a bit more complicated than that. So his admission here is actually the result of corruption. You see, Citizens United, which is a conservative group that sued the government over a federal statute that prohibited them from running political ads near the time of elections, well, they ultimately won in what is now known as the worst decision in Supreme Court history, where our campaign finance laws were effectively gutted. This group, they want more money in politics because they want to be able to bribe politicians. And in fact, they just so happen to have donated $10 thousand dollars to the super PAC of our good friend Steve here. So in advocating for less restrictions on corruption, he's doing exactly what his donor, Citizens United, wants. No shit. But irrespective of how some Republicans choose to do damage control, whether they try to literally run from it or they obfuscate the truth or just straight up admit that they want to be more corrupt like Steve King, one thing is certain about all of these people. The Republican Party, they're just a bunch of traitors, and they should be lucky that people aren't staging sit-ins in their office every single day. So uh, this organization will continue to be on their asses, as will the American people. Deal with it. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.